an optimization problem is just finding a maxima or a minima in an applied setting. As with related rates, there aren't really any golden rules for optimization. I'll put down a few kind of common guidelines. So these are the guidelines the book lays out with one guideline from me thrown in. Having said that, I am using the word guideline advisedly. In our first picture, we're not really going to do in our first example, sorry, we're not really going to do these first two steps. You are manufacturing and selling X units of something. The cost to do so is given by a cubic function. The revenue generated is given by a linear function. You want to maximize profit. This is obviously a little simplified, but it is basically realistic. Cost functions are frequently cubic. You get cost functions that look like this. And here, where the cost function increases slowly, you're seeing economy of scale. Here, where the cost function increases again, you're seeing diseconomy of scale. And because of diseconomy of scale, Cost tends to grow quicker than revenue after a while. And just manufacturing and selling as many units as possible might not be the best idea. So let's look at profit. It's revenue minus cost. So this subtraction will distribute. And give you your profit function. Now there's um there's not really any picture to be drawn here and there's not really any variable to be introduced i mean the variable is given right here in the problem so we're not doing all of these steps. I would graph the equation, though. The problem here is that we're not really doing problems like in section one or like in section three. I mean, we're not looking for a relative maximum. We want the maximum profit. On the other hand, our absolute extrema stuff was all done on closed intervals. And what's our closed interval here? We can't manufacture fewer than zero units, but it's not clear that there's really an upper bound. 
This is where a graph is going to be useful. Because think what this graph is telling us. First, it's telling us that the maximum we're looking for exists. And there was no guarantee of that. Remember, the extreme value theorem only applies on a closed interval. This is not a closed interval. So we know now that the thing we're looking for exists. And we can see that this absolute maximum is also a local maximum. We've got a local minimum and a local maximum. And the local maximum is the absolute maximum that we are looking for. And once we've done that, we can now proceed and try to find this local maximum, which is also an absolute maximum. We take the derivative. And we set it equal to zero. This doesn't factor or anything, but you can use the quadratic formula. If you don't have that memorized, you should. If you're being a math major or a math education major, that's something you should get in your toolbox if it isn't there already. And now, if we construct a sign chart, let's see, look, let's look at a um, zero. Zeros in this interval, zero plus zero minus six, that's negative. One is in this interval, 12 minus three minus six, that's positive. Um, 10 is in this interval, 120 minus 300 minus another six, that's negative. So the first derivative test tells us that this is a local maximum. And because we know what the graph of this thing looks like, we know this local maximum is also an absolute maximum. So this step isn't in the book's guidelines. A lot of textbooks are really reticent about having students to use technology. But personally, I think this step is invaluable. And also, we have completed the problem. X is in hundreds, so 3.41. Is three hundred forty one units.